Well, head to downtown Detroit and you can't help but notice all the monuments and statues throughout our city paying tribute to the history. That's right, but there are stories behind these landmarks you likely don't know. Photojournalist Alex Atwell takes us on a uniquely Detroit tour. I think so often we travel, going to Europe or going to these great cities like Boston, Philadelphia, New Orleans, and once we go, what do we immediately do? Book a tour. Why wouldn't you want a tour of Detroit? My name is Bailey Sisoy Isgro. I'm the executive director of Detroit History Tours and the Detroit History Club. So today we're hitting some of the highlights of our bizarre Detroit tour, which is all the oddities, the weird things, the only in Detroit stuff. So this is Hazen Pingree, mayor of Detroit, the idol of the people. On the east side of Woodward, you have William Cotter Mayberry in life, his arch nemesis. William Cotter Mayberry actually took Hazen Pingree to court because Hazen Pingree, well, the mayor of Detroit, got himself elected the governor of the state of Michigan. William Cotter Mayberry said, hey, you can't be both at the same time. So he takes him to court, goes all the way to the Michigan Supreme Court, where William Cotter Mayberry wins. He then runs in the special election and gets the mayoralship. These two enemies in life end up staring at each other for all eternity. So we're in Detroit's Capitol Park. Capitol Park was the original state capital, and today we're here because it's where the first governor of the state of Michigan, Stevens T. Mason, is buried. And in 1905, they buried the governor centrally in the park and placed the top part of this monument on it as a marker. When they went to redo the park in 2009 to what it is today, in digging up where they thought the body should be, it was sort of like, whoops, governor is not where we left him. Now believe when the park was used as a bus terminal in the 1950s, his body was moved. And then the high water table of Michigan was also responsible for shifting that body over the years. And it took four days to find the body, which had been moved almost 300 feet. So when they found him, he was actually up against the base of the Farwell building. When they dug him up again, they thought, fool us once, shame on us, fool us twice, we build a mausoleum. So this is Woodlawn Cemetery. Inside Woodlawn Cemetery, there are dozens of amazing architectural mausoleums. In death, just like in life, the tycoons of Detroit wanted to show off the Dodge Mausoleum, final resting place of John and Horace Dodge, the brothers who founded Dodge Automobile. Unfortunately, they both died incredibly young, leaving a $200 million company to their widows, Anna and Matilda Dodge. When Matilda remarried Arthur Wilson, she really lamented where she would be buried with her first husband, the true love of her life, John Dodge, or with her second husband, who she was married to for much longer. And in order to solve that problem, the Wilsons built the Dodge Wilson Mausoleum just next to John and Horace's final resting place. We've been a city of immigrants, and I think it's what makes us one of the most powerful cities in the world, that we're not one note. We're this symphony of different stories. The more you know. I like that. A symphony of different stories. You can learn more about Detroit <laughs> History Tour by searching online.